Now, again, I'm dismounting it to let it kill the Hobbit. It's because the Hobbit is peaceful to me, so I don't want to, like, attack it. But um, I'm just going to let that, the pony, attack it. Okay, we're going to chat with it again. To chat with something, just in case you're wondering, to chat with something you're writing, you just use the uh, normal chat command, the uh, numerical symbol, then see it for chat. And then you press the uh, sort of the the key the 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 this thing. See this key right here that my uh, cursor is pointing to, the one to the right of the down right here. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, it's wicker, so that means it's still not hungry. That's good. Well, I want to break it down, but I don't have a uh, key or anything, so I'm going to have to kick it down which means uh, getting off of it. Okay, got it. Still hungry. Nope, still just got the stuff for the horse to eat. Closed for inventory. Ah, crud. <clears throat> if it's closed for inventory, that means, well, first the door is locked. Now, if I kick it down, I'll get a shopkeeper really mad at me. And at my current level, that'll probably kill me. But we can open it with a, a skeleton key or a lock pick or a credit card. Yeah, credit card, those things can be used to unlock things. But I don't have any of those, so we're going to have to wait on it. Okay, a floating out. First, let's uh, kill this iguana. Let's try to uh, use the lance to increase my speeding. It, if For things that are slow like this, I usually try to use the lance because I can just uh, you know move away from it and keep hitting it until I actually hit it. I keep missing it. There we go, finally. Now here's a floating eye. These things are pretty annoying because if you attack them while you're next to them, if you're not uh, blinded and you don't have the reflection, um, like uh, extrinsic, yeah, extrinsic, um, it basically means that it, who cares? It basically lets you reflect stuff. Like if you have an amulet of reflection, man, I'm probably overwhelming all of you. Sorry. I just have a tendency to babble. Anyway, they freeze you in place for a while, and you have a good chance, unfortunately, of dying in the meantime. Even a weak enemy can kill you like that. But fortunately, we've got our trusty lance, so we can attack them, not from next to each other. Them. That only hits you if you attack them when they're next to you with something like a uh, longsword. Cool. We killed the floating eye. Now this is what's really cool about this is if you eat the floating eye, you have a chance to woohoo, I got telepathy. You feel a strange mental acuity. This means if I'm blind, I can still see enemies, or at least the ones that can think. That's really good, because otherwise when you're blind, you're just blind. You don't have a clue where anything is. And you you don't really want to run around because you might walk into your pet, but if you've got an enemy you and I'm weak again, so that means it's time to pray. Okay, we're going to keep looking. Nope, nothing here. I've been using the lance a lot. Lance a lot. Okay, I've been using the lance a lot, not to be confused with the knight lance a lot. And uh, because again, that will allow, if I do it enough, I can increase my skill in it, and that's a good thing. I'd like to get that out of the way as soon as possible. <clears throat> okay, anything else around here? Okay, so we've got two downstairs. One of them is going to lead to the Gnomish Mines. One of them will lead further into the dungeon. The Gnomish Mines can be tough, so I'm going to wait until I'm at least level 5 and have Excalibur. So um, I don't know which one leads there, so let's try this one. That's a Gnomish Mines. I think I'll just pick this up and then leave. Now I'm not going to be reading the scrolls because I don't know what some of them are. They might be really nasty things like amnesia, which makes you forget some levels you map and forget some things that you know. For example, if I read this and I find out what it is, if I read an amnesia scroll, I might forget what that is, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so we're going down into the dungeon, and there's some other ones that are kind of nasty. So it's a good thing not to try to read scrolls until you've identified them.
which we can't really do that until ironically we get an identify scroll. But those can be identified in other ways. All you have to do is find a shop that will take them and see how much they cost or how much they'll pay you for them. And identify scrolls are the cheapest scrolls, so they are easy to identify in that way. Okay, here's another scroll. Don't know what it is. <clears throat> Okay, nope, that just leaves there. So again, we're just kind of going through the game. <sighs> we're gonna try to see if there's anything here. Okay, no. <clears throat> it looks though, there's this big blank space here and there usually is something there. So I'm gonna see if there's uh, maybe some hidden doors around here. Ah, I found one. Okay, let's take a look. Another spell book. I don't want to read these because um, the problem with spell books essentially is uh, there's how much, how your chances of reading them depend on uh, several things your uh, intelligence, which is kind of low for me, your level, and the difficulty of the book itself. And since I'm a low level, have low intelligence, and don't know the difficulty of that spell book, I'm going to be holding off until I actually, one, have a higher intelligence or level, and two, preferably know what level it is. Okay. There's a gnome. Okay. First, let's kill this. Now let's kill this. Using the lance again. Okay. Okay. I'm going to uh, let the pony do it again. Let's see how it does. Okay. Now it's fighting the gnome lord. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. We got a, a dwarvish cloak and some iron shoes. Good. I can use both of those. Now I'm a burden, as you can see, because the uh, I'm not riding the horse, the pony anymore. Now the pony stepped on both of these, meaning I can wear them. Ah. This thing actually doesn't decrease my armor class at all. The reason to wear it is because one, it uh, protects this from any kind of damage, and also it um, increases my magic resistance or magic cancellation or whatever you call it by a little, meaning that some magic abilities have a lower chance of working on me. <clears throat> Okay, a gnome lord corpse. Actually, we might as well eat this. Okay, eat it. Forgot you don't even have to. Uh oh, the monkey. So, monkey steals an uncursed saddle from the saddle of pony. Okay, we're killing that monkey. There. Okay. Now let's put the saddle back on it. We're applying it because you need that to be able to ride it. And you do not want to lose the saddle, because that's a real pain. Because those things are really hard to replace. There are just so few of them in the dungeon. You're pretty much going to have to wish for one. <sighs> oh, we're level 5. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so uh, we're just going to finish looking around this. Okay, we're going to have to kick it down. The coyote, kill the coyote. Let's eat its corpse. Don't want to be hungry again. Okay, we're riding the pony. Now we're level five. Now that's important. And here's the reason: if you're lawful like I am and have a long sword like I do, you can try to dip it into a fountain, and it has a chance of becoming Excalibur, which is basically a better version of the long sword. So we're going to give that a go.